said, let's talk about some more, more advanced things we can do with the pen tool. And in order to understand that, we kind of have to understand how the lines and points are working together. So I'm actually going to go away from the pen tool for middle, and I'm going to draw a little model here for us. Let's just pretend that this right here is a point. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make that black. And let's just say that this is a point that I made with my pen tool or with any other tool. It doesn't really matter. Now, I'm going to copy that point so I have two points. And so here is my second point that I made with my pen tool. Okay. Now, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So by default, what Illustrator does is it sends a nice straight line between these two points. And I end up with something that looks like this. Whoops. Like this. Okay. Now, the reason that this line is able to be straight has to do with the direction in which it leaves one point and the direction in which it enters the other. You'll notice that this line is leaving this first point pointed directly at the second point. And you'll notice that this line is entering the second point in a direction that is pointed directly at the first point. So what would happen if this line started to leave going this way? Okay, so I have a line that has now left this point going up and to the right. It still needs to end up here. Okay, let's say that it still needs to end up pointed toward the other one. That's something we can change, but in this case, let's say that's where it needs to end up, is where it points there. Well, the only way that it is going to be able to do that is to curve. So at some point, it's going to have to start to curve and move back down and connect with that line, right? And this is obviously rougher than the pen tool is going to make it. You're going to end up with something that looks like this. Now, that's just one scenario. What happens if this line needs to enter, or excuse me, sorry, needs to exit this way and needs to enter this way? Again, the line has to go between these two points. The only thing we're deciding at this point is what direction it's leaving one point and what direction it's entering another. Well, in this case, again, it's going to have to curve, but this time it's going to have to curve all the way down here and do something like this, right? So I'm going to go there and then curve, go all the way down there, go around and curve and go in that side. So that's one thing that is going to significantly change the curve of our line is what direction does the point exit this, the line exit this point, and what direction does the line, the, the line enter the next point. Now, there's one other thing that we have control over that will change the way a line works, looks, and that is how far does it go in that direction before it starts to curve. Okay, so here we have kind of the same example we did in the first place. So we have a line going off in that direction and entering right there. Well, this line, it could go just a little bit and then curve down and go there, or it could, whoops, it could go further and then go down, and we get two very different looking curves depending upon how long it goes in that direction before it starts its curve to go to the other one. So that said, let's take a look at how we control those things with the pen tool. I'm going to go back to my pen tool and I'm going to click, but this time rather than just clicking and releasing, I'm going to start to drag. And you'll see there's my point in white, and I've dragged out these two lines that are called handles. Now handles aren't actually my lines. They're going to disappear once I finish dragging it. What handles are is a visual representation of the direction in which that line, that, that line is going to leave this point. And the handle coming out the other way is, is the direction in which the, a line would enter this point. Okay, so if I drag this up here and I let go and then I come over here just straight across from it and I click another point, you'll see that it started going that way 
and then it curved down and eventually entered this point. Okay, and if I go around and I finish making my points, you'll see when I get back here, it brings that handle in so that it's straight. So now it's just going out that way, and because I told it to go straight, I don't have a back handle there. Now we'll talk more about the back handles in a minute, but for now, let's just look at this example again. This line pulled up that far, got it to give me that much of a curve. So what would happen if I did something very similar down here, but this time I pulled that line all the way up like that? And then I come over and I put a point in the same position over here. Well, look, I get a much, much bigger curve this time, right? Because that, that handle was pulled out much, much further. So the direction of the handle is what way the line is going to be headed before it starts to curve to the next point. And how long the handle is, is how far it's going to go in that direction. Now it's not going to go all the way to the end of the handle. Think of it more like a, a strength of movement. It's the longer it is, the, f the, the further it's going to go out that way before it starts to curve. Okay? So by controlling those things, we can, we can do very precise things with our shapes.